Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? This question and the answer to it is the biggest mystery in the crypto world and possibly even this entire world. Was it a single person? Was it a group? Or was it an alien entity who created money and value's biggest revolution? There are many theories, but today we dive into my top candidate. So, who is Satoshi? Well, let's take a shot at answering that in just over 10 minutes because it's time for Chico Crypto. So to begin, many theories are out there that say Satoshi Nakamoto was a group of cypherpunks who came together under the pseudonym Satoshi to launch the world's first decentralized money. A group? I don't believe that for one second, because groups cannot keep secrets. There will always be a weak link in the group who spills the beans. And since the beans haven't been spilled over 13 years later, I can come to the conclusion that this was indeed not a group of people. It was a sole actor. And I have three top candidates, sole actors who I personally think it could be. Elon Musk. Sergey Nazarov, and we die. So today we're gonna dive into the first of these candidates, Elon Musk, and bring forward the evidence, old and breaking new stuff, which makes me think they are Satoshi Nakamoto. Through the next few weeks, I'll be making videos on the others, Sergey Nazarov and we die. So let's begin with the meme lord, Elon Musk. Elon has a lot of evidence that makes you think he could be the one true Satoshi. And I've created more than a few videos which dives into this evidence. I don't want to be a broken record repeating myself over and over, so I will just summarize what I've found. And the full videos are down in the description if you want the big picture. So number one, Elon is one of the founders of PayPal, the world's first full suite internet bank. And if you didn't know, PayPal's original mission was to create a decentralized currency out of government control. Another PayPal founder, Luke Nosak, spoke on this back in 2019. Let's listen in. Many people don't know this, but the mission of PayPal was to create a, a global currency that was independent of interference by uh, these you know, corrupt cartels of banks and uh, governments that were uh, just, you know, debasing their currencies. And we, uh, uh, we succeeded at building something very economically very powerful, enabled many small businesses. We're super proud of it, but we, we never achieved the mission. Now, PayPal was created by the merging of two companies. Elon Musk founded X.com, the first online banking company, and Peter Thiel founded Confinity, the second online banking company. They merged together in March of 2000, and this is when PayPal was formed. Now let's listen to this interview from Elon Musk in 2005 when he explained just what X.com did. So it's a way of paying for goods on the internet. It was a way of transferring money between one entity and another entity by specifying a unique identifier, which in this case was an email address. Using a unique identifier in X.com and PayPal's case, an email address to send payments to. Now if you didn't know, Bitcoin uses a unique identifier, a public key to send payments to. So what else is there? Well, Satoshi coded the original Bitcoin in C++ language, and there is a great website called The Hunt for Satoshi which dives into this. The website says, Satoshi created Bitcoin using C++. Hal Finney described Satoshi as a master of the language and suspected Satoshi to be a young man due to its difficulty to learn. Elon was a young master of C++ and has sworn by the language for years. Almost all of Elon Musk's companies, even SpaceX, have used C++. Then of course, there is this. In March of 2014, Elon Musk admitted that he was Satoshi on Twitter. And what's interesting is that tweet came one week after Satoshi's last words, where he came back to the P2P forums to say he was not Dorian Nakamoto, a suspect the media went wild for back then. Now it's almost time to dive into the new breaking evidence I've found. But before we get into that, it's time for a quick mention about the sponsor of this video, Flight Protocol. And like always, the full details of our arrangement are down in the description. 
FLIP is a unique DEX protocol, unlocking the 200 billion liquidity market by transforming the LP token, turning it from a digital receipt into a directly tradable asset. Currently, to change an LP position, it requires multiple steps, forcing multiple gas fees. Now, Flight Protocol transforms this time-consuming, expensive process into a single transaction. You can seamlessly change your liquidity position between different pools and protocols, even cross-chain, or create an exit and LP directly into ETH, all in a single transaction, saving users a lot of the time over 85% on gas fees. Flype is currently running on the RinkB testnet, and you can test it out on their website, flype.fi. As part of the protocol launch, Flype is airdropping their MultiPass NFT, a non-transferable soulbound token that grants its holders governance rights as well as access to all of Flype's early stage activities. Now the whitelist is already full, but Flype has allocated 200 new raffle spots exclusively for the Chico Crypto Army. To join the airdrop whitelist raffle, simply fill out the form from the link in the description. Now back to Elon. If you didn't know, Elon Musk has a love for Pokemon. He tweets about or uses memes featuring Pokemon all the time, and he has even talked about adding Pokemon Go functionality into Teslas. Now Elon's ex-girl, of which he has two children with, Grimes, also loves Pokemon. She has even tweeted her own Pokemon card, and then put out this in early 2021. It's not as popular right now, but Bitcoin's also a cash cow. And even though she's fallen some, I still grew my initial sum. I'm told that I'm on the spectrum. I catch crypto like Ash Ketchum. Crypto king like Kim.com. Get me some Ethereum. So why am I bringing up Elon and Grimes' love for Pokemon in relation to Satoshi? Well, let's get deep down the rabbit hole. Grimes told us with her lyrics, I catch crypto like Ash Ketchum. So what do I mean? Well, back in 2020, Elon and Grimes welcomed their first kid, which sent shockwaves through the media. They named it XAEA12. So how is this pronounced? Well, Elon told us in his infamous Joe Rogan podcast. I mean, it's just X, the letter X. Um, and then the AE is like, pronounced Ash. The AE in the name is pronounced Ash, like Ash Ketchum. Now, if you didn't know, Ash Ketchum is known by another name in his country of origin. As we can see from Wikipedia, it says Ash Ketchum, known as Satoshi in Japan. Yup, Ash Ketchum is known as Satoshi in Japan, but this goes even deeper. We know the X stands for X in the name. AE stands for Ash, what does A12 mean? Well, if you didn't know, X Ash A12 was born May 4th, 2020. 2020 was the year of what? Well, 2020 was the 12th anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper. Could A12 stand for 12th anniversary? Oh, you fucking motherfucker. No one cares about your music. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Could A12 stand for 12th anniversary? So read the name backwards with our connections. 12th anniversary, Ash or Satoshi, X marks a spot. But wait, there's more. There's always more. What about a leaked IP address? There is a great blog titled Who is Satoshi, which dives right into this. The blog says, in the January of 2009, when Hal and Satoshi were working on Bitcoin Alpha version, Hal encountered an error with the software, and he posted the debug log to the mailing list. In the initial days of Bitcoin, the software used IP addresses to send and receive Bitcoins. For this reason, the debug log becomes crucial for the investigation. It reveals IPs of three users who were connected to the IRC. This happened on 1-10-2009. Satoshi and Hal were the only two people working on the project during this time. So where did Satoshi's IP address come from? Van Noyes, California. And the blog says, this is not a Tor exit node, which implies that this is the IP address used by Satoshi on January 10th, 2009. 
and he was in Benoist on this day. And then there is this article about Elon's private life and his jet. The article says, the jet is registered to a subsidiary of SpaceX called Falcon Landing, named for its reusable rocket, Federal Aviation Administration records show. Musk or his associates took an additional step, common among top business executives, to request the travel not to be logged on public flight tracking databases. Many of the flights took off from or landed at LA's Van Nuys Airport, a short drive from the Tony neighborhood of Bel Air, where Musk owns five separate mansions. So can we put Elon close to Van Nuys back in 2009, when this IP was leaked? Well, this Mansions Global article tells us, yes, we can. They say, in 2012, after three years of renting it, Mr. Musk bought a 20,240 square foot white stucco colonial mansion, according to Brian Addis, a real estate agent with Thosby's International Realty, who represented Mr. Musk in his purchase of the Los Angeles home. Three years before 2012, when he bought it, is 2009. Elon was renting this mansion close to Van Nuys back in 2009. Now there is one last piece of evidence which puts this all together, Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor states that one should not increase the number of entities required to explain anything. All things being equal, the simplest solution is often the best one, which Elon has put his own twist on. January 2021, he tweeted, the most entertaining outcome is most likely, which then he says Occam's razor is actually the third most likely. Wouldn't the most entertaining outcome of who is Satoshi be that Elon Musk is Satoshi? Well, Elon in 2021 was a featured guest at the B Word conference, a major Bitcoin conference in which they talked all things Bitcoin. Guess what Elon Musk brought up during the talk? Occam's razor and his own spin on it. There's Occam's razor, which is the, 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 the simplest answer is the most likely. Uh, it's a summary of Occam's razor. The simplest answer is the most likely one. Then there's a friend of mine came up with a variant on that, that the most ironic outcome is the most likely one. Um, and then I have a variant on that, which is the most entertaining outcome is the most likely one. Wouldn't it be simple, ironic, and entertaining that Elon Musk is Satoshi? Me think so. What do you think? Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.